Once upon a time, there was an amazing fluid simulation software called Nyad, which was very popular around the time of making movies like 2012, Avatar, and many other amazing VFX-heavy movies. But unfortunately, the simulation software does not exist today, because it was acquired by, you guessed it, Autodesk. And as you might expect, it was shoved under the rug. But this was not the end of the story. In today's video, we will explain what happened to Nyad after Autodesk's acquisition, and what is its relation to Bifrost, the new shiny simulation tool of Autodesk that is integrated within Maya, and was it worth it to sacrifice Nyad? Now, let me take a moment and tell you about Malcolm's Mal scripts for Maya. It is basically a set of very useful tools designed to enhance your workflow using Maya. These scripts offer a lot of modeling and productivity tools. For example, the mirror tools allow you to quickly mirror objects and speed symmetrical modeling. And the edge selection enables you to select any edge, vertex, or face with any offset that you want. In addition to access aligned lattice, vert snapping, and tools like deleting empty groups, fast modeling open and close, extra head elements, and much more. Speaking of extra head elements, the scripts offer a visual quick start guide that can be found directly in the Maya shelf by clicking the help shelf button. The developer also offers all these scripts and more for a huge discount if you want to grab the whole mail script mega pack, including every other script in one place, which will be much better than buying them separately. And if you want to keep up to date with all these Maya scripts from this developer, you can check out his LinkedIn page where he posts a lot of new content and posts all about these updates of these tools. So if you are interested, you will find all the necessary links in the description. I think if you are a Maya user or if you have been using 3D software for a while now, you may have heard of Bifrost at some point. I know that this might come as a surprise, but Bifrost had a completely different life before becoming what we know as Bifrost. How you might ask? Let me explain. In the early 2000s, a time when this guy, a PhD student by the name of Robert Britson, was achieving career goals and making a name for himself in the industry as one of the original contributors to the development of physics simulation code base at ILM. So he joined forces with another guy called Marcus Nordestan another legendary figure in the industry, who was known for his groundbreaking work on blockbusters such as Spider-Man 2 and Star Wars Episode 2. And together, in 2008, they formed Exotic Matter. Here's the thing. This collaboration wasn't a simple coincidence, because you see, both of them were VFX experts in simulations, and their shared ambition was to create one of the most advanced fluid simulation software in the market. Eventually, this aspiration gave birth to Nyad, a fluid simulation software that quickly became a popular choice for creating large-scale fluid simulations in Hollywood, and for making some of the most complex fluid effects at the time, to the point where it got featured in many of our favorite blockbuster movies, such as Avatar in 2009, some Harry Potter movies, and Pirates of the Caribbean around that time. Now, here is the plot twist. Nyad is actually none other than Bifrost. Yes, you've heard me right. Following the success it had, it was only natural for it to attract the attention of some of the top companies in the industry, including Autodesk, who bought it in 2012. But the excitement didn't last long, because they made it disappear from the eyes of the public shortly after that. However, this was for a reason. Because after years of development behind the scenes, it re-emerged in 2019 as Bifrost, after 7 years as a new simulation tool for Maya, which could be referred to as a rebranding and the spiritual successor of Nyad, which does make it more of a powerful software. Or does it? Now, in terms of what could be said about the acquisition, I think it is only fair to acknowledge that it totally revolutionized VFX in Maya. Back in the day, Maya had its own toolkit of systems and algorithms for handling simulations. I'm talking about stuff like fluids, particles, and cloth and end hair, which I'm sure many of you are already familiar with. And make no mistake, they are undeniably powerful and can still hold their ground nowadays. But the reality is, 
they are no match for an industry-leading commercial software like Houdini, or in-house tools such as the ones we can find at Weta Digital, Digital Domain, or ILM in terms of quality and realism. They also have different interfaces and workflows, and they are not compatible with each other. So, as a way to accelerate Autodesk research and development of simulation technology in visual effects, they acquired Nyad and relaunched it as Bifrost, their new way to create physically-based simulations such as smoke, explosions, as well as procedural modeling, particles, and so on, with a set of advantages that weren't previously present in Maya. But is it really that good and worth it? So let's see. So naturally, as things go, these exciting brand new technologies and changes to the VFX workflow in Maya had a direct impact of the efficiency and creativity of VFX studios. I mean, it is one of the most used software in the industry. If you remember, one of the most appealing features of the software is the interactivity between the different types of elements and effects as we said, which allows for more flexibility and a higher quality of visual effects in general. This feature was especially used for MPC Film VFX Studios, who had to create realistic ocean and water effects that they had to interact with full CG ships and characters for the Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Men Tell No Tales, which made Bifrost a perfect solution for them, as it offers similar functionalities to the point where they even bothered to develop a new ocean toolkit that had a tighter integration to Autodesk Bifrost, just so that they could add it to their pipeline. Another area that made studios attracted to Bifrost is its instancing abilities, a technique in computer graphics to render identical or similar object in a scene. According to VFX supervisor Todd Akira from the Miles Studios, Bifrost has become useful in handling elements such as feather and garment simulations and foliage instancing for other commercials. He viewed it as a tool that would comfortably be added to the Miles pipeline due to this compatibility and among many other reasons that make studios want to use it. Now, you might be wondering, if Bifrost is this good, then why do studios use plugins such as FumeFX and Phoenix FD? Well, while Bifrost is a very capable tool on its own, and even though a studio have their own preferences, I believe it mainly boils down to the fact that these types of plugins are more specialized, whereas Bifrost is more of a general visual programming environment. This makes the other plugins better in specific tasks, for example, FumeFX excels in the creation of smokes, explosions, and fire. However, I still see that as only a bonus personally, because the real deal in my perspective is how these plugins receive major updates. I don't want to sound controversial, but I think the development of Bifrost after its acquisition by Autodesk did not meet expectations. And while the acquisition and the very first years looked promising, I feel like Autodesk did not invest as much time in improving the tool afterwards, which was expected. This ironically enough is a common pattern of Autodesk's acquisition strategy, as they are accused of buying and then killing innovative software. For example, an effects artist with 15 years of experience said, Autodesk bought and killed Nyad, and they haven't done anything with the tech they destroyed, and it's not gonna go anywhere. While we can't speculate about the future, or if Autodesk is gonna give up on the tool or not, it's worth mentioning that the recent updates of Bifrost have been lackluster, to say the least, as it could be seen in the last update of their video they have uploaded, where the only cool new addition I found was its new GPU way of rendering volumes. But if we compare it to the sort of updates that software like FumeFX and Phoenix FD are getting on the regular, or even Blender on a smaller level, the software isn't getting developed as much as we want it to be, or as it should at least, in my opinion. Now, the million dollar question. Did Bifrost really satisfy the needs of VFX in the industry? Well, I would say it's generally a no, but there are cases where it did, let me explain. The main reason for its failure to impact the industry was related to its delayed release after the acquisition, just like an effects artist summed it up really well, and he went saying, everybody was already on Houdini when it came out. They are at least 15 years behind, they have a smaller development team, and they are nowhere near the market saturation. Also, this is built on top of a platform, I mean Maya, that was never built for effects work. 
So basically Bifrost is relatively a new tool that does not offer all the built-in functions or functionalities to the same level of advanced software like Houdini. For example, Houdini has a wide range of advanced solvers such as Pyro, Grains, Wires and Crowds, as well as more procedural modeling and animation tools, in addition to motion graphics. However, this does not mean that Bifrost is completely inferior, as it is still widely used in the industry and has a role in the professional pipelines of studios. For example, Platinum Games often use Bifrost for procedural CD generation, and some movies like Pirates of the Caribbean's Dead Men Tell No Tales have used Bifrost to a certain extent. So if the question is, is it gonna satisfy certain needs of studios, then yes, to a certain extent. But unfortunately, the VFX industry is heavily now leaning on Houdini because it is more reliable and it is more updated frequently and it is much more powerful. So there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Also, please subscribe to this channel if you want more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.